every word in that program was thought about, was weighed. So the whole time I'm trying to listen, digest and throw the argument forward. It was the most difficult thing I think I've ever done in 20, 25 years of working for the BBC. So I'm a journalist. I've worked for the BBC for many years in front of camera, for BBC World News as a news anchor broadcasting to people around the world, but also a different kind of journalism as an investigative journalist at Panorama and at the Money Programme making long documentaries. And what I've done is to take all the skills that I learned at the BBC, journalistic, presentational, investigative, and I put them together now and work with live audiences. There's no autocue, there's no script, and there's an amazing buzz. So working in the news studio was a huge contrast to what I'd done before as an investigative journalist, where some investigations could go on for months. I did a very well-known investigation of Robert Maxwell, which took nine or ten months. And every word in that program was thought about, was weighed, went through lawyers. Every single word was considered. In news, you don't have time to do that, especially in rolling news. You have to speak spontaneously, and you have to use your experience as a journalist and your judgment as a journalist to hope that you get it right. It's turning into another day of turmoil in Iraq, both in the streets and in government. At least 69 people have been killed and scores more wounded in three separate blasts. A fuel truck packed with explosives. September 11th, 2001, started off just like any other day. I had the afternoon shift at BBC World. I was in air from 12 to 4 and I think it was at about quarter to two in the afternoon. I was between bulletins. I was sitting there having a sandwich, my lunch, when the news editor, Buzz, came running across the newsroom and he said to me, Nisha, just get on the set now. So I picked up my stuff and started running and calling out him, Buzz, so what is it? And he said, one of the Twin Towers at the World Trade Center is on fire. That's all I knew. And we went on air saying that. There was a point when the second plane went into the second of the Twin Towers when I had this sickening realisation that this wasn't an accident, which is what we were thinking until that point. And I simultaneously had to process my reactions as a human being, which were reactions of horror and empathy and fear and disgust. At the same time, I was, after all, a BBC news anchor telling the world what was going on. And I had to stay calm and controlled and composed. Now, it's very easy to fill acres of television with speculation. It's very hard if you have to rely on the facts. And the BBC tradition is to avoid speculation and to only give out facts, what is known. And we knew very little. So it was actually terrifying for me, professionally, because I had to hold this together, and yet I knew very little. So I had these human responses, which were you know, really f feeling rather wretched. And at the same time, I had to do my professional job. It was the most difficult thing I think I've ever done in 20, 25 years of working for the BBC. After a day of rumour and counter-rumour, Pakistani politics is in a state of high confusion. Working through the first two hours tested me to my very limits. I was working the outer edge of my abilities, really having to rely on all my experience as a journalist. And it taught me that actually I don't need the autocue. I don't need the script. I don't need someone telling me in my ear what to say next. I can manage well on my own. I've got to the point in my career when I can deliver on my own. And so I bring all that experience to what I do now, working with live audiences. There is no autocue. I'm engaging with the audience all the time. You never know what someone's going to say. And I feel I have the confidence to deal with it. And if it wasn't for 9-11, I sometimes wonder 
whether I really would be doing what I do today.